In today's lab, you did a double replacement reaction again. This time it was between an acid and a base. The acid is hydrochloric acid. The base is sodium hydroxide. You first tested each of the, uh, the um, HCl with red and blue litmus paper. So you should have found that the red stayed red and the blue turned red. You really have to use both litmus papers to decide if something is acidic or basic. All right, the NaOH, by contrast, the red litmus paper turned blue, and the blue probably got a little more blue, but either way, they both turned blue. So if you have both papers turn red, it's an acid. If you take both papers and they turn blue, it's a base. If you have the papers and the red stays red and the blue stays blue, then that would be something that's neutral. So that's why you really have to have both litmus papers to test. Okay, it's not enough just to use one type of litmus paper. Um, so you should have also filled in your universal indicator colors, your red cabbage indicator colors, your pH paper color and actual value of the pH. So just to let you know, the, um, uh, the red litmus paper, um, sorry, the HCl would have had a low pH, okay, but write down the actual number, and the base would have had a high pH and just make sure you write that actual number. Don't just write low and high pH. Okay, so this one is a little more difficult to see a result because there's no solid, there's no color change. There's, there's no way to really know what's going on in this reaction if you just put HCl and NaOH together because this is a colorless liquid, this is, or solution I should say, because it's aqueous. So remember, this is AQ. Also, this is a colorless solution, so it's AQ. And let's see what happens when you put them together. You've got H plus and Cl minus, that makes sense. You've got Na plus and OH minus, that makes sense. It's a double replacement, so the H plus is going to go with the OH minus of the other compound. And you could clearly see that HOH is the same thing as H2O. You could write either one, it doesn't matter and you know water's a liquid. And then you're gonna look at the other product, which is gonna be Na, which is plus one, and Cl minus, which you know is minus one. They match up nicely. And this is also gonna be Aq, aqueous, because NaCl is soluble, because in your solubilities you, rules, you know that chlorides are part of brickles. Brickles trickle except for the happy tickle. That's not part of the happy tickle. Also, Na is group one and that automatically is soluble. So this would have been AQ as well. So you're not gonna see anything happen. When you make liquid water and aqueous salt out of aqueous HCl and aqueous NaOH, there's no visible change that you will ever notice, which is why we're doing this slowly over here. On the bottom, you should have had your observations with the universal indicator. Universal indicator really goes through all the colors of the rainbow. So. On the acid side, you're going to be from Roy G. Biv, the rainbow colors. You know that red is one end of the rainbow. And then we're going to have um, the other end of the rainbow is violet. And so this should have been really close to a violet or bluish color because of that end of the rainbow. Okay, so you will see the color change in the indicator as this happens. So as you started with the HCl and you added 10 drops of HCl into a test tube and you had the color of the indicator and then you took your six drops of the NaOH and you added your indicator to that and noted the color, all right? Then you put them together. Now when you balance this equation, this is really interesting, when you balance this, it actually comes out to be a one to one to one to one. And we are actually setting the stage for our next chapter, which is on stoichiometry, which answers the question, how much? But for now, you should understand that a one to one ratio means you would need equal amounts of HCl and NaOH to react. But you'll notice that we only had uh, 10 drops of this, but we only had six drops of this. So we had less NaOH and they had the same concentration. They're both about one molar. So what we're doing is we're slowly adding NaOH into this combo. So if you add six NaOH drops to 10 HCl drops, you're going to still have extra HCl here because they're not equal amounts. And so because it's extra HCl, the color is going to stay red. 
because it's still an acid. Then you add a seventh drop, it's gonna stay red. An eighth drop, it's gonna stay red. Ninth drop, 10th drop, they're gonna be even. And when they're even, hopefully, you were able to get some sort of green when they were equal. This is not exact, it's not exactly easy to do. Okay, but the green was when it was neutral with the universal indicator. And then one more drop would have gone towards violet or you know blue at least and then violet. So it's a little tricky because drops are not exactly the same amount when you do a dropper. So it might not have been exactly 10 with 10. That's why I started you off at six. So anywhere in this range, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 drops of the NaOH, you're gonna see this color hopefully go to green and then go to neutral. So the whole point of this one was to help you not only see the pH is changing as you move from left to right in the reaction, but that the red um, universal is more acidic, the violet is more basic, and you'll see that transition through green when you hit neutral when these two are exactly the same amount. But then if you add extra NaOH, so for argument's sake, let's say you added 12 drops of NaOH, now you have extra NaOH, so now, because you have extra of this left over, the whole solution will have this violet color at the end, um, even though you also made these two. This will set the stage for later, but for now, hopefully you got a basic idea of, of the um, amounts of these two reacting have to be the same.